Welcome to the second lecture of uh, Engineering 623. Uh, today uh, we will discuss three problems. Uh, those will be problem um, problems 211, 216, and 223. So we start with problem 211 and that problem says the following a 100 ohm transmission line has an effective dielectric constant of 1.65 find the shortest open circuited length of this line that appears at its input as a capacitor of 5 picofarads at 2.5 gigahertz repeat for an inductance of 5 nanohertz. So uh, the first thing we'll do is um, calculate gamma of Z for this line. Uh, remember now it tells us that the line is um, open circuited and so that's why we use ZL equals infinity. Uh, therefore, gamma of zero uh, is ZL minus C naught over ZL plus C naught, or ZL minus uh, or infinity minus 100 over infinity plus 100, which, which is equal to one. So gamma of zero is equal to one, the reflection coefficient at zero, at the load it is equal to 1 and therefore gamma of z uh, which is equal to gamma of 0 times e to the j 2 beta z is just e to the j 2 beta z so here we have that gamma of z is e to the j 2 beta z now uh, zn is equal to z naught times 1 plus gamma of z over 1 minus gamma of z where um, we need to use z is equal to minus l if we want z in this this formula here is a, a general formula to calculate the impedance at any point along the line but if we if we want z in then we need to evaluate this at this little z uh, being equal to negative L, where L is the length of the line. So keep that in mind. Uh, so if we um, multiply both sides of this equation by 1 minus gamma of Z, once again keeping in mind that Z is equal to negative L, we'll have uh, Zn minus Zn times gamma of Z is equal to Z naught plus Z naught gamma of Z. And um, so we get, after a little bit of mathematical manipulation, gamma of z is equal to zn minus c naught over zn plus c naught. And remember, we've already found that gamma of z is e to the j 2 beta z. So we can plug that in here. And once again, I'll remind that z uh, and this little z here must be negative l since we are using uh, Zn here. Okay, now let's finally go ahead and use the fact that epsilon r is equal to 1.65. Uh, beta is equal to omega times the square root of epsilon r over c. Uh, this equation is valid as long as mu r is equal to 1. S so uh, when we Substitute it in, epsilon r equals 1.65, and uh, use the value for c, um, and the given value for f, we end up with beta is equal to 67.257 inverse meters. And uh, so if we substitute that value for beta, back up into this equation that we have derived we get e to the j 134.515 z 
is equal to Zn minus 100 ohms over Zn plus 100 ohms. And once again, I will remind you that Z here is equal to negative L. It's negative of the length of the line. Now, uh, recall in the first case, this problem said that um, we wanted to find the shortest open circuited length of the line that appears at its input as a capacitance of 5 picofarads at 2.5 gigahertz. So um, that means that Zn is 1 over J omega C uh, in this case where C is equal to 5 picofarads and the omega corresponds to F equals 2.5 gigahertz. So this is Zn in the first case and um, um, we can bring this J upstairs to make it a negative J. The omega is um, 2 pi F here and 5 picofarads is right here. 5 times 10 to minus 12 uh, coulombs per volt. And uh, if we um, multiply out everything here, <coughs> we will end up with minus J times 40 divided by pi ohms. Or in other words, uh, Zn is minus J times 12.732 ohms. So if we uh, substitute that into uh, this equation here, that we have derived, we will get E to the J 134.515Z is equal to minus 100 minus J 12.732 over positive 100 minus J 12.732. And uh, on the right hand side, that's the same thing as E to the minus J 2.888. And so um, if we now equate the two coefficients, we will get Z is equal to minus uh, 0.02147. And remember, this is consistent with what we said before, that Z was equal to negative L. And therefore, uh, uh, the minimum length here is 0.02147 meters or 2.147 centimeters. So that ends up being uh, quite straightforward. Now, um, the only other comment I will make is that there would be other Z's that would make this equation work. Um, because as you know, uh, uh, E to the J theta is the same thing as E to the J times the quantity theta plus 2 and pi. So there would be other values of Z that would make this equation valid, but we wanted the minimum value of Z. Uh, and so this will be that minimum value. The, this, excuse me, I should say this is the minimum value of the length, uh, 2.147 centimeters. I mean, of, of course, the length has to be um, a, a positive number to make sense physically and so this is the minimum positive uh, value that the length could have. Okay so now uh, we go to the second case and of course we're not going to have to go and redo all of this work. Um, this equation right here that we derived before will still be um, useful to us, but now uh, since we in the second case want to make it the input impedance look like an inductor rather than a capacitor, uh, we'll just simply get va different values for Zn. So in this case we uh, are told that we want to make um, um, the line appear at its input as a an inductance of 5 nanohenries at that same frequency of 2.5 gigahertz. So we have Zn is equal to J omega L 
at where L is five nano Henry's. And uh, again, this is at uh, 2.5 gigahertz. And so um, just as we did before, we stick in two pi F for Omega. And um, then for nano Henry's, uh, we, we get the 10 to the minus nine here. And so uh, when we multiply this all out, we get J 25 ohms, excuse me, J 25 pi ohms, which is the same thing as J 78.54 ohms. <laughs> and so now substituting that value for Zn into uh, this equation that we derived before, we get uh, E to the J 134.515z is equal to J 78.54 minus 100 over J 78.54 plus 100. And um, on the right hand side, that is E to the J 1.81. Now, if we, um, if we equated uh, the coefficient J, excuse me, the exponent, if we equated J 134.515Z to J 1.81, we would get a positive value for Z. But remember, we want Z to be equal to negative L. So what we need to do is to adjust this exponent to give us the um, negative exponent of the smallest magnitude. Because remember, we want the minimum length. So we want to use the exponent here. This is, you know, this is not the only um, exponent. This J 1.81 is not the only exponent that would make this whole term here equal uh, to the same thing. So we want to use the exponent, the negative exponent that would be smallest in magnitude. And we, we simply get that by taking 1.81 minus two pi. And so we would get e to the minus j 4.473. And now we can uh, equate the uh, exponent j 134.515z to minus j 4.473. And when we do that, <clears throat> we get z is equal to minus 3.325 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. And again, that's negative L, so length in this case is 3.325 centimeters. So that's how you would do uh, this problem, uh, 2.11. And now uh, for the final problem uh, to be discussed in this lecture, we go to problem uh, 223. And um, in this problem, 223, we're told that a, sh uh, a slotted line experiment is performed with the following results. The distance between successive minima is 2.1 centimeter. Uh, the distance of the first voltage minimum from the load is 0 0.9 centimeters. And the SWR is equal to 2.5. Uh, Z0, the characteristic impedance of the line, is 50 ohms. And we want to find the load impedance. So one way of doing this problem is the following. Uh, we start off with, equation, with an equation here that we saw, in fact, in the last problem. V of, uh, I'm using x now, or you could use z or x. But <clears throat> v of x is equal to v plus e to the minus j beta x plus v minus e to the j beta x. Again, that's uh, exactly the same equation we used in the last problem. And uh, uh, since V minus is gamma of zero times V plus, we could substitute that in to get this equation. And then uh, similar to what we did in that previous problem, uh, we will factor out V plus E to the minus J beta X. And when we do that, we're left with one plus gamma of zero E to the J two beta X here in the parentheses. And so this is the expression for V of X. Um, and notice that this gamma of zero e to the j two beta x is just uh, another way of writing gamma of x. So um, we note that. And if we take the magnitude 
of both sides of this equation. We get magnitude of V of X on the left hand side. Of course, the magnitude of V to the minus J of X is just one. Uh, here we get magnitude of V plus, and then we get magnitude of one plus gamma of X. Now, if you look at this equation right here, and remember that gamma of X is equal to gamma of zero times E to the J two beta X, that means that gamma of X is a complex number that will always have a magnitude equal to the magnitude of gamma of zero, uh, but this will rotate in the complex plane as you go to different values of x. It will always have the same uh, distance from the origin, but it will rotate around the origin. Now, um, we're going to take that complex number and add one to it and then take the magnitude. Now keep in mind V plus here, this is just a constant. So the magnitude of V plus is a constant. So the only way that we get, uh, or, or the reason that we get different values for the magnitude of Vx at different points along the line is, that, is, because, is simply because of the variation in this term as we go to different values of X. Now, where do we get uh, the maximum magnitude? Well, keep in mind, again, gamma of x is rotating around the origin. And for some values of x, gamma will be in a, a positive real number. And for some values of x, it will be a negative real number. At all other times, it will be a complex number. But we get the largest magnitude since this one here is a positive uh, number. We're going to get the overall largest magnitude when gamma of x is positive real. And we'll get the smallest magnitude when gamma of x is negative real. So that means that the magnitude of V of x will be maximum when the phase of gamma of x is equal to 2 in pi. That's saying that gamma of x is a positive real number. And the magnitude of V of x will be minimum when the phase of gamma of x is 2 in plus 1 pi. In other words, when gamma of x is a negative real number. So now we're beginning to, uh, we're, we're ready to use this information about the distance between successive minima. Okay, um, we, we first note that the magnitude of gamma of x is equal to the magnitude of gamma of zero e to the j2 beta x, because that's what gamma of x is after all. And the, uh, the phase of a um, complex number like this is equal to the phase of the first times the phase of the second. So we have, excuse me, plus the phase of the second. So we have gamma, the phase of gamma of zero plus the phase of e to the j two beta x, which is just two beta x. So the so the phase of gamma of x is the phase of gamma of zero plus two beta x. Now uh, we had information about successive minima, so we're going to equate this to this value uh, two in pi. So we say note that if one minimum occurs at um, um, I'm oh, sorry, this 2 in pi was for maximums. 2 in plus 1 pi is for minimum. So if we have one minimum at 2 in naught plus 1 pi, then we will also have a successive uh, or a following minimum at 2 times n naught plus 1 pi. And, and um, if we multiply that out, that becomes 2 in naught plus 3 times pi. So... Uh, now we can, we're ready to calculate the distance uh, corresponding to that. So one minimum is at x naught, where the magnitude of gamma of zero plus two beta x naught is two n naught plus one pi. And the next is at x one, where magnitude of gamma of zero plus two beta x one is equal to two n one plus one pi.
or which is 2 and naught plus 3 pi. Now, if we solve those two equations for x naught and for x1, we get x naught is equal to this value, x1 is equal to this value, and now if we take the distance between the successive minima, we get x1 minus x naught, and when we take the, the terms on the right hand side and subtract them, we subtract the uh, top from the bottom. We're just left with 2 pi over 2 beta or pi over beta, which is the same thing as uh, lambda over 2. So we have x1 minus x0 is lambda over 2, or if we multiply both sides of that by 2, then we get lambda is equal to 2 times x1 minus x0. Now we were told that the distance between successive minima was 2.1 centimeters, so lambda is 2 times 2.1 centimeters, or 4.2 centimeters. So lambda... Uh, in this case, the wavelength is 4.2 centimeters. Now, we're also told that the uh, standing wave ratio is 2.5, and the formula for that is 1 plus magnitude of gamma over 1 minus magnitude of gamma. So that is equal to 2.5, and that easily gives us that the magnitude of gamma is 0 0.4286. Now remember, we're, we're also told that a minimum occurs at x equals minus 0 0.9 centimeters. So that means, now, now remember, minima occur when gamma are, is a negative real number. And gamma always must have the magnitude of 0.4286. So that, if, if we put that together with the fact that we know that a minimum is occurring at x equals negative 0 0.9 centimeters, then we have gamma of minus 0 0.9 centimeters must be equal to minus 0 0.4286. Now the formula for gamma of minus 0 0.9 centimeters is gamma of 0 e to the j 2 beta minus 0 0.9 centimeters. And uh, now if we take uh, well, we rewrite this gamma of zero here as the magnitude of gamma of zero times e to the j phase of gamma of zero, and then the e to the j two beta uh, minus 0 0.9 centimeters, that just becomes e to the j two, and then the beta is two pi over lambda. Here's the minus 0 0.9 centimeters, and on the right hand side, we have rewritten minus 0.4286 as positive 0 0.4286 times e to the j pi. Coming down to the next step now, uh, the magnitude of gamma of 0 is 0.4286, and um, uh, this e to the j, we, we've taken these two exponential terms and combined them all together into e to the j, and then we have the phase of gamma 0 minus 4 pi over 4.2 centimeters times 0 0.9 centimeters. Of course, the centimeters will cancel. Down over here on the right-hand side, we just bring down what we had from before. And, uh, of course, when we compare now these, this, the two sides of this equation, the 0.4286 on both sides will cancel. And we now just um, um, take the, the phase here. The, or the, 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 the uh, argument of the left-hand side, uh, main, the, the, which is the phase of gamma 0 minus 2.6928. And on the right-hand side, um, we can have a pi, or we can add to that 2m pi. Uh, and, and that would still, of course, have the same value as we discussed in, in previous problems. So... This means that the possible values for the phase of gamma of zero, uh, when we bring this 2.6928 over to the other side of the equation, the possible values for the phase of gamma of zero will be 2m plus 1 pi plus 2.6928. And now we're ready to finish this problem and, and find ZL. ZL minus C0 over ZL plus C0 is gamma of zero. And so if we do a little bit of work, then that tells us that 
ZL is equal to Z naught times one plus gamma of zero over one minus gamma of zero. And this gamma of zero in the top could be written as magnitude of gamma of zero e to the j phase of gamma of zero. In the bottom, uh, do the same thing. And now we substitute Z naught is equal to 50 ohms. Magnitude of gamma of zero we have found out is 0.4286. And uh, now we have just above calculated the phase of gamma of zero. It is 2n plus 1 pi. 2.6928 so we substitute that in the top and bottom and um, now this the e to the j2n plus 1 pi part gives us negative 1 so that's why this uh, plus sign in the top becomes negative and the negative sign in the bottom becomes positive and we're just left with 1 minus 0.4286 e to the j 2.6928 over 1 plus 0.4286 e to the j 2.6928 and when you do that calculation you simply come up with this value the ZL is 99.217 minus j 45.217 ohms so that's the way uh, that we would do problem 2.23 which is our first slotted line problem of the semester and so that concludes uh, lecture 2 for Engineering 623, and uh, uh, good luck.